um, an avenue toward improving medication um, compliance or adherence. So general objectives are really just to identify the steps in the process to describe how it can be made to fit into different treatment plans, both on the inpatient and the outpatient side, as well as to outline at least one example of where it could be, um, where deci shared decision making can be used. Because I think that'll help bring some of the things together. So we're gonna start with definitions. So what is shared decision making? It's described as an approach where clinicians and patients share the best available evidence when faced with the task of making decisions and where patients are supported to consider options to achieve informed preferences. Um, it's also been described as an interactive process where um, the clients, family, or caregivers really are included as part of the treatment team um, where they all come together and begin to make a, um, to make a decision. So uh, it's been interesting, some of the places where shared decision-making has been utilized, there's a large amount of research related to the oncology um, and uh, screening testing arenas. The literature that's been done in the mental health arenas has been a little bit different. Um, two of the larger studies that they looked at, um, one was in a pediatric and adolescent clinic um, that served mainly patients who had attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. And what they found was that the patients and their families felt like they were much better, uh, much more incorporated as part of the decision-making process, whereas the healthcare providers felt like it was uh, a good way to ensure that what they wanted to happen was happening. So there was a relatively large discrepancy in, in how they believed the process itself was um, what the advantages were to that. So that's just something I'd like you to keep in mind. So there will be a number of different decisions that the patients are confronted with. It may be easier the first time through this process. Um, the shared decision-making process is included in a number of um, first treatment programs to try to help develop executive <laughs> functioning skills. Um, so sometimes it's easier to do it on a decision that doesn't have large ramifications instead of starting with where should I live, should I go back to school, and what about medication decisions. But it can be used for any of those types of decisions. And there are three steps to the process. Preparation and information gathering, the discussion and, gener and generation um, of a decision, and then the reevaluation and revision. I think a couple of these aspects are really important. One is the preparation and information gathering is going to seem like a tedious process that is going to be relatively laborious, but I think that's the one of the most key components to, to really use to identify some of the areas that the patients are having problems. And the third step in the process, that reevaluation, I also think is very important because it demonstrates that this is an ongoing process. It's not a one-time decision and then that's it, that's final, it's written in stone forever. It's something we can go back and revisit and hopefully learn from what had happened as a result of the decision the first time. So this was, I did not create this, so I'm very thankful to some of our more tech savvy folks here who were able to make it look nice and pretty. So these are the three steps, which are those three big circles, and we're gonna start with the preparation and information gathering. There may be different, um, times when the patient wants to be much more involved or less involved. There may be times when they're able to be more involved or less able to be involved in some of the decisions. So this really is a dynamic ongoing process. This could be used really as a, as a wonderful foundation to talk about uh, when patients are doing well, how involved they do want to be, but also recognizing some of the limits where they may not be able to make some of those decisions. I'm thinking specifically if there is some involuntary hospitalization or forced medications that are put in place. This allows an opportunity to really introduce those concepts without having it sound incredibly punitive, but just laying it out that these are some of the situations that may occur. This is also an opportunity that could be done with, within the treatment team to identify what values, preferences, or goals that the patient has. Um, so specifically focused on medications, this may be vitally important to what the patients or the family will be able to tolerate. Um, 
what they're going to really have a difficult time with or what their expectations of the medications are. Um, this may be where you uncover that they really expect the medication to make everything go away and go back to what it was prior to the individual getting sick. So that provides a really good opportunity to talk about what medications can or can't do. The information gathering. So once you've identified, so should a patient continue on the medication they were started on in, in the hospital? So you can start talking about the different options. So continuing on the medication, could we switch to a different medication? Does the patient really want to try a period of time off of the medications? But this is where you brainstorm all those options and start to be able to collect some information and identify the questions that need to be addressed. And I want to use this next slide. Um, so there are a number of different organizations that have materials to support shared decision making. This is just one example that we have included with some of our first episode team materials. And it helps identify so the patient's goal related to it and all of those potential options that were brainstormed, and then the questions that are important to consider before they go on to make that decision. This allows it to be an open dialogue. So there may be very significant concerns with the patient going off of their medication right away. So some of the questions that can be raised is, what might be some of the benefits to going off the medication? What might be some of the risks? And it's done in a more open format as opposed to, it really is not in your best interest to go off of your medication at that time where the patient may not feel quite as um, part of the process. They may be much more receptive if they're talking about both aspects of it. So utilizing some of those motivational interviewing aspects. Once the, those questions have been identified, you can really use that to have a robust discussion. So potentially some of your treatment teams um, the case managers or counselors that are working with some of your folks may be able to go through some of that information and tee it up to you before you see the, the patient the next time to say, here are what some of their main concerns are, here are what some of their big questions are regarding their medications, so that that can be addressed in a little bit more of a direct manner. Sometimes it may be very overwhelming to try to identify what those issues with their medications are. Um, I, I would imagine most individuals have questions that they give to their patients trying to solicit any concerns or, or questions patients have about their meds, but when they're put on the spot, they may not be able to come up with that. The other thing it allows the opportunity to do is to provide them with decision aids. So different materials that they would be able to either take home or go over with um, yourselves, the prescribers, or other members of the treatment team to really try to continue to process some of that information. So things like weight gain risk. Well, there are some that are more likely to cause weight gain than others as far as antipsychotics are concerned, but that may not be the original message that the patient hears when they get that um, response. So giving them time to go through, okay, it seems like most of these cause some degree of weight gain. This is just more than others, but it doesn't happen with everyone. They can get a little bit more into the details of that if they're capable. And their families and caregivers would have an opportunity to go through that information as well. So the discussion piece really is to review the information to try to start narrowing down those options. Um, so we've identified that, okay, maybe going off medications right now is not in your best interest, um, that you really don't want to go back to the hospital. You'd like to go back to school or back to your job. Um, so we'll continue on it and revisit a little bit later, but here are some of the side effects that you're really concerned about. Maybe they're the movement disorder side effects. So you're able to kind of narrow down those options to just a couple. And there are other resources that patients can use, including the Ottawa Personal Decision Guide, to help narrow that down even further. So once they have their couple options, like so I could stay with this medicine or maybe switch to this one, um, and this lets them rank, here's one option, here's why I could choose it and how important that is to me, why I may not want to choose it and how important that is to me. That also provides really important information on the inpatient side 
So if we recognize what some of the concerns are when patients are doing well and potentially thinking a lot clearer, then that could help inform those folks what options they want to choose to get the patient stabilized and then discharged. So if the patient is absolutely um, against having any type of injection, then that would be something that we would need to keep in mind doing a lot of legwork to get prior authorizations in place and get them stabilized on those may be not a good long-term strategy because when they're out, they may immediately want to be off that or start trying to skip their injections. So this really could inform the treatment decisions on both sides of the equation, both inpatient and outpatient. Once those decisions have been made, um, this really is the reevaluation and revision. So did it go the way that we wanted to? Um, so what are, what are the good things that resulted from you staying on the medicine? What are some of the consequences um, or, or bad things that happened as a result of staying on the medication? And do we need to go back and revisit? One of the, um, so adherence to antipsychotic medications overall does not tend to be very high, regardless of um, the type of medication that we're using. So patients like the second generation is better, but it doesn't mean they're going to stay on them long term. So continuing to go back and, and revisit, is this still a good fit? Is it still working? Are there new side effects that have shown up? Um, being able to go back and continue to have those discussions can be really productive so that the patient's concerns or the family and caregiver's concerns can be brought forward and then put um, into play with this process so that they do feel that they're contributing to it, especially if they're not going to continue supporting this decision then that would be something good for the treatment team to know also, instead of finding out after the fact that they've really just gone off their meds. So let's look at, um, so those are the three steps. So relatively straightforward. So preparation and information gathering, discussion, and then reevaluation and revision. So this is one example. I have it set in an outpatient setting. Um, so Heather is a case manager who's working with a new patient to the community mental health clinic. Um, the client's considering whether or not to continue the antipsychotic medication that was started um, when they were in the hospital that got them discharged out. So the information gathering would be, okay, so what are, what are the options that you see? Staying on this medicine, changing to a different medicine, could we potentially lower a dose? Um, would you stop it all together? So what are some of the options that they would have? And then what are the questions that we have related to that? So what would be a potential consequence of going off the medication? What are some of the risks associated with that? Um, what could be some of the benefits of going to another medicine? Are there certain side effects that they're most concerned about? This might be where the dis this decision aids come into play. I mean, I wanted to show you an example of just one. So if the patient is really concerned, you know, this medicine really helps clear up my thoughts and make them a little bit more organized, but it makes me so sleepy, I'm not able to um, attend to my job or I'm not able to take care of my children the way that I want to, then this would be an opportunity to look at, okay, what might be other options that aren't quite as sedating? Which ones would you be willing to, to try um, in exchange for, for the medicine that you have that's really making you sleepy right now? There, these decision aids can be made for any areas of concern that you have for the patients. Um, the ones that we include in our first episode programs have um, sedation, there's sexual dysfunction, um, weight gain, movement disorders, so some of the EPS cost, we've also included. So it really gives them in a picture format a way to, to compare some of the medications, both first and second generation. That also gives the, the doctor a chance to be able to um, have consistent information repeated by all members of the team um, as they're talking about the different options. So the, um, the process overall seems relatively straightforward. Um, it seems a little bit more labor intensive having those initial discussions, but that's really the opportunity to engage the patient and the caregiver so that you can create a better alliance. So everybody's kind of on the same page, you know where those priorities are. 
So that's what we have for shared decision making. I'd like to open it up. I don't know if you want to do introductions. It looks like we have quite a few new new members up there. If we'd like to open it up to questions first. Yeah, let's. Uh, 